Welcome to the Art and Business of Interior Design, the podcast where creativity meets strategy in the world of luxury interiors. Brought to you by interior photographer Ryan Shapiro. Welcome to another deep dive. Today we're tackling something I know a lot of you dream about, and that is getting your interior design work published. Yeah. We're talking magazines, online features, the whole nine yards. Absolutely. And to guide us, we've got excerpts from this honestly awesome guide that breaks down the entire process. I love this guide. So yeah, we're going to be pulling out the best tips and tricks to help you get your work seen. By everyone. By everyone. Yeah. From like those cool little local design zines to... You know, a textural digest. Yeah, exactly. Now, it's right. powerful, you know, getting published. It's that like this instant credibility boost. You know what I mean? Definitely. Potential clients, they see your work out there in a respected publication. Yeah. It's like, boom, instant trust. Right. They know you're not just like some random person with yeah. a, a Pinterest board, you know? Exactly. You're legit. You're the real deal. You're a pro. Yeah. A published professional. Exactly. Yeah. And this guy, the first thing it jumps into, and I think this is super important, is the portfolio. Of course. Which, like, yeah, we all know you need a good portfolio. Yeah. But this guide dives deeper. It's like way deeper. It's not just about showcasing your best work, but really like honing in on your specific design style. A hundred percent. The projects that, you know, really scream you, you. You have to curate it. Yeah. It's got to be a collection that shows off your skills. Yeah. But it also has to tell a story. Oh, interesting. About what you do, about your design philosophy. Like yeah. what drives you. Like what makes you tick as a designer. Exactly. I love that. And the other thing is, and this is where a lot of people, I think, get it wrong, mm-hmm. the photography. Oh, yeah. This guide stresses professional architectural photography. Huge. Not just like... Some iPhone snaps you took. Oh, I've been there. We've all been there. Right, early days, yeah. But those professionals, they know how to use light, composition, all that. Thank to you. make your spaces, like, sing. Sing, yeah. They bring them to life on the page. It's a game changer. Completely different. Okay, so you've got this killer portfolio, now what? This guide then talks about, I think, what can be kind of overwhelming. Yeah. Which is finding the right publications to, like, actually submit to. Right, right. And what I love is that it encourages you to think beyond just, you know, the biggest names out there. Totally. Because it all comes down to, like, who are you trying to reach? Right. Who's your ideal audience? Exactly. So, for example, the guide says, if you're, like, super passionate about sustainable design, Mm -hmm. you should be looking at publications that, you know. Align with that. Yeah. That focus on eco-conscious living and design. Absolutely. And if you love designing spaces for families, yeah, look for those magazines aimed at like young parents. Exactly. It's about like... It's smart targeting. Yeah. Being strategic yeah. and aligning your aesthetic with... With the reader. Yeah. Who's actually going to be like flipping through those pages. Spot on. And to do that really well, the guide recommends like really getting to know the publications you're interested in. Mm-hmm. Like... Don't just glance at them. Like, actually read their articles. Yeah, study the layout. Yeah, look at the photography. Like, get a feel for their vibe. See what kind of projects they feature. Exactly. And this is key. It also says to check out their submission guidelines. Oh, submission guidelines. Those are gold. Yeah. And usually, they're right there on the publication's website. Yeah, easy to find. And they tell you everything you need to know, like what kind of projects they're looking for, the image format they want. Word count. Yeah. Word count, all that nitty gritty stuff. It's like your roadmap. It is. It tells you exactly what you need to do. To get your foot in the door. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Okay, the guy then gets into something that I think is like the Lev glamorous side of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it's so important. And that is networking. Oh, networking is everything. It is. And I think sometimes people think networking is just like, you know, sending a DM. or Yeah, online stuff. Yeah. But the guide emphasizes like really building those genuine relationships 100 percent. and it suggests like going to industry events you know conferences trade shows yeah and actually like talking to people yeah striking up conversations don't be afraid to like approach someone whose work you admire yeah or even like send a personalized email to an editor oh that's a good idea Mention an article of theirs that you loved, you know, explain why you think your work would be a great fit for their publication. 
Yeah, I like that it shows you've like actually done your research. Exactly. You're not just mass emailing everyone. Right, you're being thoughtful. You're being intentional, yeah. I love that. Because people can tell. They can totally tell. When it's genuine. Okay, so you've made those connections. You know the publications you want to target. Mm -hmm. Now comes, I think, the most like nerve-wracking part. Yeah, the pitch, the pitch, and this is where the guide really shines. It gives you like tactical advice. Yeah, practical tips on crafting a compelling pitch because you have to grab their attention you do you have to stand out and it says like you need to really highlight what makes your project unique totally did you use like some crazy cool sustainable material yeah or like did you have a really weird layout challenge that you like it, you solved brilliantly yeah that you totally nailed or maybe there's like a really heartwarming story behind the project Ooh, i love those yeah editors love a good story you do it makes it more than just like a pretty picture exactly it gives it depth it makes it memorable and of course the guide stresses including those amazing professional photos we talked about earlier oh absolutely gotta have those visuals yeah because a picture is worth a thousand words right? especially in this industry totally okay i think we've covered a lot but there's one thing i want to acknowledge because I know this whole process can feel daunting. Yeah, a little intimidating. Even A competitive world out there. It is. And the guide even says, like, rejections are just part of the game. They are? Like, even the best designers. Even the top, top people. Yeah, they get rejected sometimes. It happens. It doesn't mean you're not good. It's not personal. Not at all. And this is what I always tell people. You just got to be persistent. Yes, I love that. Keep refining your portfolio. Keep practicing those pitches. Yeah, keep putting your work out there. Because sometimes, you know, a project that's a no for one publication yeah. might be perfect for another one. It's all about finding the right fit. Exactly. So to wrap up all this amazing advice, if you want to see your work published, mm -hmm. you need that killer portfolio. Be strategic about which publications you target. 100%. Build those relationships. Key. And make your pitches stand out. Irresistible. Make them irresistible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. Any final thoughts? Before you even start pitching, I want you to think about this. What's the story your work tells? Right. What makes it unique? What makes it you? Yeah. Because your design voice, that's your superpower. It really is. Use it. Create a narrative that editors and readers won't be able to resist. That is such good advice. Uh, yeah. I love it. All right, everyone, I hope you feel inspired. Me too. To get out there and get published. Yes, go for it. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. See you next time. That brings us to the end of this episode of the art and business of interior design. I hope you've taken away some actionable insights and feel inspired to push your creative and business boundaries. If you enjoyed today's conversation, don't forget to hit subscribe. Your feedback helps us reach more like-minded creatives. Follow Ryan on Instagram at Ryan Shapiro Photography for more behind the scene content and updates. And feel free to reach out with any questions or topics you'd love to hear about in future episodes. 